Thank you to Roger and to Graham for that great interview. One of my favourite adventure books is by the French author Jules Verne, Around the World in 80 Days. Towards the end of the book, um, Phileas Fogg and his companions are racing back to England from America, but they hit a problem. Now the story is set or was written in 1872, the era of steamships. And the problem is this, they don't have enough coal to fire up the boiler. They've used it all. It looks like they're not going to get back to England in time. But Phileas Fogg is shrewd, he's a clever chap. And he comes up with the idea of, um, well, let's just break up all the wood on board and we'll use that to fire up the boiler. And that's what they do. Wooden railings, tables, chairs, decking, whatever is wooden, they break it up and it goes into the boiler. And as good adventure stories should happen, they just about make it in time. But when the ship is in dock and you get a kind of a, an overall view of it, all that is left is the hull, the boiler and the funnel. Everything else has been burnt except for the essentials, the hull, the boiler and the funnel. Those are the bits they could not do without. Otherwise the ship would have gone down and they would have sunk with it. Now in Christianity you can get rid of an awful lot of the trimmings, a lot of things that well they're not too important or they might be to some people but there are certain things you cannot get rid of the hull the boiler the funnel and for us as Christians the key bits are the cross and the resurrection of Jesus the Apostle Paul calls them of first importance or of greatest importance if you remove the cross if the resurrection is not true then Christianity is false it is a sham ignore it. But if they are true, then you dare not ignore it. Let me talk about three things from this verse in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 3 to 4. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Now you might say, hold on, how can a man dying 2,000 years ago affect me today? Well, of course, the key is always to remember who that man was. Not just an individual who was good. Not just a religious leader who made an impact. Christians believe he was the eternal Son of God who chose to enter our world 2,000 years ago. And by the wisdom of his words, the miraculous deeds he performed, and by his resurrection, is proven himself to be the Son of God. So we're not talking about any man in history. We're talking about Jesus Christ. Fully human, but fully divine. Now the death of any great person affects history. That's why there are assassinations. That's why JFK was killed, Mahatma Gandhi, Martin Luther King. Their deaths affected the course of their nations. Well, if one man's death can affect so many lives, how much more will the eternal Son of God, his death affect the whole of eternity? So it is not when Jesus died in history that's important. It is who died and why. And this verse tells us the Christ, the Messiah died. And why did he die? For our sins. An email came from the KJV Medical Center in Kenya. It contained this story. Eight-year-old Monica fell into a snake pit. She broke a leg. Helplessly, she laid at the bottom of the pit, unable to rescue herself, to pull herself out. An older woman, Mama Najirai, happened to be going along the same path. She saw the girl in distress, climbed into the pit and lifted Monica out. But in the process of helping Monica, a dangerous black mamba snake bit both Mama Najiri and Monica. Now Monica was taken to the medical centre, she was treated and she recovered. Mama Najirai went home, fell asleep in her chair and never woke up from that sleep. The next day the nurse explained to Monica what had happened. That the snake had bitten Mama Najiri first and all of its poison had gone into the woman. Then it bit the child and although it was uh, painful and uh, caused great discomfort, it couldn't kill her because the poison had been taken away by Mama Najiri. Now I think that's a nice illustration of the cross of Jesus. The Bible says all of us will die 
But death has lost its sting. Death has lost its poison. Why? Because Christ has taken it for us. He was the willing one who allowed himself to be bit and poisoned and killed upon a cross so that you and I need not uh, experience the same fate. The Bible says the just died for the unjust, the righteous for the unrighteous, the virtuous for the sinful. You and I were dead in our trespasses and sins, poisoned. But we are now alive in Christ who has taken that poison, who forgives our sins and gives us new life. So the first point, Christ died for our sins. The second point, he was raised on the third day. And Graham mentioned how the resurrection was so important to him. I like the story of the vicar who uh, preached a fantastic Easter Sunday uh, sermon. And uh, he spent a lot of time talking about the cross. And he went into great detail about what crucifixion was all about. And then like people do, uh, preachers and vicars, he stood by the door to shake hands on the way out. And a little boy went up to him and he said, uh, uh, the sermon, not bad, mate, not bad. And the vicar said, well, thank you, sonny boy. I I'm glad you enjoyed it. And then to his amazement, the boy said, uh, just one mistake. And the vicar said, uh, I, I beg your pardon. And the boy said, just one mistake. And the vicar said, well, what was that? And the boy said, well, you left him on the cross. And off he went. And the vicar realised, even on Easter Sunday, he'd spent so much time talking about the death of Jesus. He forgot to explain the resurrection, the most important bit. Because Christ died for our sins, but dead people cannot help anyone. But the fact he rose again is the proof, the evidence of who he is, the Son of God. That on the cross, something mysteriously happened. Fact, Christ died for our sins. And Christians believe it is a fact he rose again. Uh, Brooke Foss Westcott was a British bishop, scholar and theologian. He said this. There is no historic incident better or more variously supported than the resurrection of Christ. And we heard from Graham Albans about uh, the investigative uh, journalist Lee Strobel and his book, The Case for Easter. A man again who set out to disprove the resurrection but found there was evidence for it. And he came to faith. Check out the evidence. Get a copy of that book and read it. Christ died for our sins and Christ rose again. And then finally, according to the scriptures, that's mentioned twice. Because the death of Jesus and the resurrection were not mysteries that, or, or, or inventions by the Christians. They were there in the Old Testament, the Hebrew, the Jewish part of the Bible. Isaiah chapter 53, Psalm 22, Psalm 69. Bring to us again these great truths. I like what Isaiah the prophet said, 800 years before Jesus walked on planet earth, Isaiah described him. He said, we despised him and rejected him. A man of sorrows, acquainted with the bitterest grief. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way when he went by. He was despised and we didn't care. Yet it was our grief he bore, our sorrows that weighed him down. And we thought his troubles were a punishment from God for his own sins. But he was wounded and bruised for our sins. He was beaten that we might have peace. He was lashed that we might be healed. 800 years before crucifixion came to that part of the world, Isaiah in chapter 53 described what would happen. And the New Testament writers confirm it. Peter could say he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross. Christ died for our sins, the just for the unjust. He rose because a dead saviour can't help anyone. And he came according to the scriptures. God had a plan and that plan was fulfilled in Jesus. Now let me ask you, have you ever responded to that plan? Just as I conclude, I'm going to give you the opportunity to invite the living Christ into your life. It's as simple as A, B, C and D. Let me explain. A, there's something to admit. The Bible says we have all sinned. We're all flawed. None of us love God the way we should. We all do things we're ashamed of. Admit your sin. And the Bible says repent. Turn from it. Something to admit. B, something to believe. 
Put your faith in the death of Christ. Ask him to, to cleanse you, to forgive you. See, something to consider. Hey, being a Christian isn't just for Sundays or special holiday occasions. It is a daily walk with Christ. We invite him in as Saviour and as Lord. You cannot buy salvation, it is free. But it costs us everything. And then Christ gave everything for us. So consider the cost. And then D, there's something to do. And that's simply to pray, to make that start. How do you pray? I'm going to pray a prayer now. And if you want to take my words and make them yours, you can do so. Why not just take one line at a time and pray it in your own heart and mind? It's not the cleverness of my words. It's the sincerity of your heart. And the Bible says, if you mean it, then God will hear it. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for the interview with Graham and for speaking to me through his story. Thank you for these words in the Holy Bible. Lord, I'm sorry for the times I've ignored you and left you out of my life. Lord, please forgive me. By faith, I want to receive your gift of salvation. Lord, by faith, I want to believe in Jesus, the one who loved me, the one who gave himself for me. Live in Lord Jesus Christ, the one who rose from the dead, the one who went back to heaven. Come into my life. Cleanse me, change me, give me the courage to follow you, I pray. Thank you for hearing this prayer. Amen. Well, it's been good to share with you. I'll hand you back to the rest of the team.